I don't understand, I don't understand poetry. I don't think poets understand poetry. I mean, do you realize that the only group of people who've managed to make grammatic violation in art? I mean, that paired with rhyming and they're suddenly labeled as, as artistic intellectuals. I mean, do you realize that, that the poets and rappers are essentially the same people? But nobody gives rappers the same respect as poets because, because, you know, because society is against baggy clothing. You know, because hipsters are all against in, in, that, in that hipster clique with the, with the, with the sweatshirts and the, and the wool, wool sweaters and the, and the berets and the big glasses. They all make me sick. They all make me sick. You know, they really do. They sit, they sit in their little coffee shops with their little, little dingy laptops and, and they stare at the screen and they think they're such intellectuals. You know who the real intellectuals are? The people out in the street with no clothing, with no possessions. That's what got them there. Real intellectual thinking. You're drifting off topic. Well, you know, it all, it all started with a poem and a crazy poet. A crazy poet with, with a wool sweater sitting in a dingy coffee shop. You know, it, it, was, it was an English class and my, my English teacher, she gives, us, she gives us an assignment, my overbearing, pompous English teacher, she, she gives us an assignment, you know, like, like an analysis. And it was an English class, which I find so unbearably ironic because the thing wasn't even written in English. You know, at first I thought it was just like Braille or Morse code or something, but I came to the conclusion that it was just dots, dots on a piece of paper, 12 dots, and then it said, the 12 blue berries. What does that even mean? What about your classmates? Classmates? Yes, your classmates. I can't, I can't identify with those people. Honestly, I feel like I'm the only person in that class sometimes. Every single one of them has the mentality of your classic hipster. They all think, they all think they're such intellectuals. But, you know, people who think they're intellectuals are never actually intellectuals. The depressed ones with no confidence in themselves or the world around them. Those are the real intellectuals. Well, you just have to look at the words, you know. Just single out the words themselves. What do they symbolize? What do they mean? Well, it's a matter of looking at the space in between the words. The words themselves are immaterial. The silence perpetuated by the dots, breathtaking. You know, the only person I can, I can relate to in that class is, is Joel. You know, because all the other idiots are sitting around analyzing, analyzing metaphors and fruit. And then Joel, but Joel just, Joel just sits there with a little pathetic smile on his face. How you doing, buddy? I was, I was speechless. I, I couldn't think of anything to write down. I was in the same position as Joel, except it wasn't because I had a low IQ. I, I genuinely couldn't think of the significance of 12 dots on a piece of paper. I decided to ask my, my dad, the classical figure of authority in my life. I don't know anything. Ask your mother. You know, his yelling is the reason we can never get through border crossings without, without going to the interrogation room first. He's just yelling all the time. You know, but anyway, I asked my mother too, and she's, she's just like terribly unstable. She's, a, she's very morbidly sentimental. Mom, listen to me. This is a poet was a normal no, person. Mom, this. mom, the poet was a normal person. Don't, makes me this is not a time to get emotional, mom. The poet was a normal person. There was nothing wrong with him. You know, I, can just, I can just do it on my own. It's fine. It's fine. She's the reason we get out of the interrogation room very quickly. You know, everyone, everyone feels sorry for her. Did you ask anybody else? The internet. But you know, the, the internet is another classical example of a pseudo-intellectual hipster. It dances around the actual subject for hours before actually getting to the point. And when it actually does get to the point, you're, you're too tired to care. But you know, even, even after all that, I, I still didn't know what to write. I stayed up all night and I had absolutely no idea what to write. Did you actually end up writing anything? I, um, I, I did a 24-page analysis. You know, you, you know, if you think about it, th that's two pages for every dot in the poem. I'd stayed up all night writing a 24-page analysis of a poem that was only three lines long. I only handed in 23 pages, but I believe in quality over quantity. I don't know if I believe in that, but whatever works for you. I felt like there was a strangled woman speaking to me through the poem.
When are we gonna mark our analysis? Can I redo mine? I only did 23 pages. I sent mine through an email attachment, but your computer looks really old, so I'm guessing you didn't get it. If I get lower than a 95, I'm gonna jump off a bridge and kill myself. Twice. Can you mark them now? What happened after that? I was I was confused. My heart felt weak. I, I developed a paranoia that led me to question everything around me. I lost faith in everything. Religion, atheism, the time my mother told me I was special in a good way. I mean, all I could think of about was was all the, all the homeless intellectuals living out in the street and all the all the, the overanalyzing idiots that were sitting around me. What happened? I don't know. I don't know. Nothing happened. Nothing. Nothing happened. I, I couldn't get out of my desk. I was I was stuck, both physically and mentally stuck. Are you quite sure about that? The last time you came in here, you told me that you had knocked over your table, denounced the entire class as, I quote, pretentious idiots, and your teacher as a bloated psychopath. And the time before that, you told me that you continued to rip up everyone's homework while rolling around in the discarded remains. And the first time you came to see me, you told me that you threw your chair at your teacher and she developed irregular breathing patterns, so she had to be taken to the hospital. Which version am I supposed to believe? I don't know. I don't remember. Then what do you remember? I remember... I remember Joel's face. You know, everybody was shocked that day, even, even me. Even my pretentious hip classmates, but... But Joel, Joel wasn't shocked. Joel wasn't shocked at all. He was in, he was in pure bliss. And it, you know, it was in that moment that I became insanely jealous of him. You know, there was something poetic about that moment, but... So I, don't, I don't know, I don't understand poetry. <laughs>